One of the most important things for neonatal resuscitation is that you prepare where you can. You need to be familiar with what equipment you have in your practice area that will enable you to give support during resuscitation to the neonate. You need a minimum of two towels to dry and wrap the baby with. You need a stethoscope because that is best practice for checking the baby's heart rate. And you need to be able to give some ventilation support, either with a bag valve mask or you get familiar with your resuscitator that is in your area. It's very important to make sure that you've got appropriately sized masks. So in order to appropriately assess the baby, the baby is brought to your prepared area. It's very important to dry the baby thoroughly. And then remove the wet towel from the baby. And then the baby is wrapped in the dry one. Your assessment should always include colour, colour of the baby, tone, whether the baby has any tone, breathing, is the baby trying to breathe or is it crying, and heart rate. Best practice is that you measure the baby's heart rate using a stethoscope. This is an adult one, but a neonatal one would always be useful as well. When you check the baby's heart rate, you must always tap it out. This indicates to other professionals that hope are with you the condition of the baby. So just to recap, colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. Do I need to call for help at this point? So A for airway. If the baby is not breathing or is gasping, then we need to open up the baby's airway. With a baby, it's a very subtle manoeuvre. The head needs to be placed into the neutral position. This means that the baby's face is parallel to the surface that the baby is lying on. And sometimes you have to get down to have a look to check the baby's head is indeed in neutral. If this makes no difference, then we need to give the baby five inflation breaths. In order to give the baby inflation breaths, we need to find an appropriately sized mask. The mask should be a, a perfect size that fits in the baby's cleft of the chin and is rolled over the baby's nose and mouth and fits uh, as, as tightly as possible. It shouldn't go into the baby's eye socket area. Once you've sized the mask up, you then attach it to the device you're going to use. And in this instance, we're going to use a bag valve mask. And then we're going to roll that back over, over to the baby's nose and mouth using a C and E position of holding the mask in place to prevent any air escaping. And we're going to give five long sustained inflation breaths. These breaths should last two to three seconds each. When you're giving these inflation breaths, you should watch the chest to see if the chest is rising, thus initiating that you know you've got your inflation breaths working. One, two, three, off. Two, two, three, off. Three, two, three, off. Four, two, three, off. Five, two, three, off. If you don't manage to see any chest movement during that time, you need to reassess the airway. The head may need to be put in a different position. So once you have given your five inflation breaths and you think that they have been successful because you have seen the chest rise and fall, the baby should be reassessed again colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. And once again, the heart rate is checked with the stethoscope, tapping out the rate so the professionals around you know the condition of the baby. If you've successfully achieved airway and breathing, and that you've opened up the airway successfully enough to make the chest rise and fall when you've given your inflation breaths, you then are able to give a further 30 seconds of ventilation support if the heart rate is still slow. These ventilation breaths are much shorter and last just one to two seconds each. So 
one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off. That's done for a further 30 seconds before you reassess the baby again. Colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. Once again, listening to the baby's heart rate and tapping it out. If the heart rate still remains slow at this point, then you go on to give cardiac compressions. Cardiac compressions can be done in two different ways. Best practice is the encircling technique, where the person who is supporting you encircles the baby's chest and places their thumbs on top of each other on the internipal line, which is just a little bit lower than the nipples, on the sternum centrally. The baby's chest is then depressed by a third and released again. And this happens three times to every one ventilation breath. So just to recap, the ratio at this point is one ventilation breath to three chest compressions. That is done for a further 30 seconds and then the baby is reassessed again. Colour, tone, breathing, heart rate. If you're unable to give the encircling technique because the baby is quite large or your hands are too small or there are other people around the baby giving other, other aspects of care, then the two finger approach can be used. In the two finger approach, the two fingers are placed directly on the baby's sternum on the internipal line and the chest is compressed by a third. The action must be a downward action. It mustn't be pushed over to one side. The fingers must be upright. Um, three compressions are given in the same way.